بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعينه ونستغفره أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا وعبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم We thank Allah for his mercy for his blessings for his guidance his protection We thank him for enabling us to gather for another Salatul Juma. We thank him for his special gift to humanity, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We thank him for protecting and preserving the Quran and for endearing it to the hearts of the human being. We thank him for giving us a way of life, a way of living, a religion that is able to bind the hearts together of a diverse humanity as though they were one brotherhood. Whether we read the Quran or the Bible, the Injil or the Torah, all of the believers of these books also believe that it was revealed by God. And it is to be used in order to order our societies, to guide and establish civil order in society, to guide human life. We derive our laws frequently from these very books. Thou shalt not kill becomes, it's against the law, it's called murder. Thou shalt not steal becomes, you shouldn't rob, you shouldn't cheat. We are extracting our guidance for our daily community and social life from the revealed word of God. What is good character? What is bad character? We get it from the Quran. We get it from the Torah. We get it from the Injil. Muslims, we have a special relationship with this revelation that has been compiled into the Quran. We know that we must wash our hands before we hold the Quran. We should make wudu if we're going to read the Quran. We should never hold it below our waist. We should never use it like reading it in a bathroom or a toilet. We have special consideration and a special position that the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to be held in. We find in the Quran information that was revealed over 1400 years ago, yet only in modern times have instruments and systems of science been developed that can actually ascertain that information and verify it. Yet God deposited this information. As he says in the Quran, he revealed it on the heart of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Quran, in Surah 6, in Ayat 91, Allah says, وما قدر الله حق قدرين إذا قالوا ما أنزل الله على بشير من شيء. No, just estimate. Have you made of Allah? I have entitled this kutba today. Don't underestimate Allah. Although the situation, although the uh, circumstance that this revelation is dealing with was speaking of one group of people who were telling the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah had not sent any revelation to man because of the characteristics of individuals who reject the fact that Allah is qudli shayin qadir. It can apply to anyone that takes that state of mind or that condition of heart. No just estimate do we sometimes make of Allah. Now, it's one thing if you underestimate how much you owe to the IRS. They'll send you a letter or someone to your house. It's another situation if you underestimate how long it will take you to drive to the Islamic Center for Juma, you may be late. But what we never want to do is underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to share with you three things very quickly that can happen if we do that. The first thing is, if we underestimate the power of Allah, we cut ourselves off from his mercy and his guidance. 
we deprive ourselves of the help that can come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't know that you have access to he who is the Lord of all the worlds, you may think you are saddled or burdened with trying to come up on your own with a solution for the inequity in humanity today. You may be pondering, how do I address the abuse of women? How can I deal with the abuse of children, the neglect of the homeless, the needy? But if we remember that Allah is the solution for us, if we remember that in the revelation that he gave to the prophets, therein is information for us, if we don't underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be able to access the information that is in the Quran. I like the interfaith information that is in there. You see, if you're looking at a pluralist, pluralistic society, if you're looking at how to deal with Muslim, Christians, and Jews, if you're looking at how to bring people together, you need look no further than the Medina model. How it worked then. If you are concerned about the inequity between men and women, you need look no further than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in the Quran that he created men and women, both men and jinn, for no reason other than to serve him. He said that it is believing men and believing women, charitable men and charitable women, trusting men and tr So we know that there is this balance here, and they should be treated equitably. All we have to do is access the revelation that Allah has given us. If we underestimate the power of Allah, we will forget that Allah is the source of all life. I want you to stretch your mind a little further than thinking that he is responsible for just our human life. Allah is the source of all life. And if we underestimate the power of Allah, if we underestimate the control that he has over his creation, if we underestimate him, we will not be able to access the information that tells us that he is the source of life on all levels. If your family is going to come to life, if your family is going to look like a living unit, it is only Allah that can give it life. If you have a company, you may have a dead company. It doesn't produce anything, it's not manufacturing, it's not going anywhere, it's dead. If your company is functioning, if it is producing, only Allah gave it life. Allah is the source of all life. Biologists give us some parameters. They tell us if something is alive, it's called organic, it's either inorganic or organic, and they give us four things that we should look at to be able to determine if something is alive. They say the first thing you can look for is that it respirates, it breathes in, and it gives off. And then it eats and it passes off what it doesn't need. And it is able to reproduce itself. And the fourth thing is it is mobile. It moves. They have given us four indicators of life. But this applies to everything. There are some nations. There are some languages. There are some cultures that have died. But if you are enjoying a business if you're enjoying living and working with an organization that is functioning and it is alive, it is Allah that is giving it life. Because he is the source of all life. If your business is thriving, it is Allah that brought it to life. If your relationship is thriving, it is Allah that has brought it to life. If you and your children have now come together and there's no more tension and, and, and confusion, it is Allah that has brought that relationship to life. He is the Lord of all the worlds and he is the source of all life and none other can have it but him but if you're underestimated you may be sitting in your office trying to figure out why you don't really have to pay no taxes this year because you didn't really make no money anyway or you may be sitting in the lounge room at the college or the university trying to figure out why uh, you can't go and get a student loan uh, or you can't uh, re apply this semester and it's really because your grades have died. Sometimes we could be having janazas every other day. A janazah for your business today. A janazah for your school report tomorrow. A janazah for your organization the next day. We could actually have janazas for languages. They have languages that have died. 
Allah is the source of all life. But no just estimate have we made of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in ayat 6 of the Quran, in ayat 91, no just estimate have they made of Allah. Those who say he reveals nothing to the human being. And he mentions this because he is talking to the followers of Musa alayhi salam. Moses is one of my heroes. I like him a lot. I work in the prison with people that have gone afoul of the law and turned their lives around. Moses killed a man. I like the fact that even though he killed a man and had to flee for his life and go through a process, kind of a redemptive process, that Allah chose him to be his prophet. But here's the thing that really impresses me. Allah told him to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to release his servants. These were normal circumstances. If you read the Quran, you will read that Pharaoh was called the Lord of Stakes. He was famous for impaling people on stakes that disagreed with him. Now, you get an inspiration that Allah told you to go back to a place where they're looking for you for murder, and the man there is famous for impaling people on stakes. How do you get the courage to do that? Musa alayhi salam did not underestimate the power of Allah. Musa tells Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have a charge against me, and I fear that they will harm me. And Allah tells him, what in the Quran? They will not touch you. And he believed it. You see, this is when you really understand the power of Allah, and you don't underestimate his ability to be of service to you. There's another person in the Quran that I really, really like. He's a hero of mine. I just have a whole bunch of heroes in the Quran. I just love it. You may be into Batman or Superman. I'm into the prophets. Just heroes of mine. And it's Prophet Ayub called Job. Everything that he had is taken from him. His family, his property. And see, people would have thought that he was being punished or he had done something wrong, but they were underestimating what God was doing with his life. And I want to share with you what he said when he was in a position where he had lost everything, property, family, his livestock, everything was gone. And where he had been told by so-called friends that you must be guilty of something. And when even his wife in scripture, it says, had told him you need to turn and cuss God so you can end the situation, he responded in the language he spoke of Hebrew. He said, hen, kato, yako, yachet. It means, hen means although. Kato means he slay me or deprive me of everything of my life. Yacho means yet will I or yet I will. And yacho means serve him. Though he take everything I got, I'm never going to underestimate the power of him to change my life around, to turn everything around for me. He says, him, kato, yacho, yacho, yet will I serve him. That's when you don't underestimate the power of Allah to change your life. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. So dear Muslims, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we can find solutions in the revealed word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every condition we face. There are women all across this country and probably other countries who are wrestling with abuse. If they wonder if there is a solution, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the cure for it. There are men who are suffering from the fact that they may not be in economic positions where they feel like they really are the man. They really are the provider. You don't have to run to no sheikh or guru. Open the Quran. Allah has already revealed in it the solution for that state of mind and how you can address it. God's ability to give life, God's ability to help us, God's ability to change our circumstances are all accessible as long as we never underestimate the power of Allah.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala qayru musaleen. Muhammad al-Nabi Umi wa ala ali wa sabi ajma'een. The second thing that happens if you underestimate the power of God is you don't realize that he has the power to punish you. You don't realize that he has established a day of resurrection, that he is the Maliki Yawmideen, that there was a day of accountability. If you don't recognize and underestimate the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you may think that you just got it going on and that you don't have to be accountable for no one. I like when I read in the Quran when Allah asked the rhetorical question, they did such as that. He said, do they think no one saw them? We say Allah hears everything, but we talk to each other sometimes like nobody heard that. We gossip about people as though nobody else heard that. We treat people with disdain sometimes, but we say Allah sees everything. But we think because we hid ourselves in the comfort of our homes or in a back bedroom or in a closet or in a car that nobody saw that. If you underestimate the power of Allah, you will be shown what you have done. And Allah says it doesn't travel far. He uses the analogy. He says your deeds are like a rope tied around your neck. I often wondered, you may not do this, but I often wondered, how long can it be around my neck before it becomes a noose? And then you get strung up by it. But if you underestimate the power of Allah, and if you don't realize that there's a day of accountability, even scientists tell you that for every action, there's a reaction. And if you walk right out here on the streets, you'll meet somebody that's probably been in these streets for years, and he'll tell you what goes around comes around. You see, everybody knows in their own way that there is a day of accountability. But if you underestimate the power of Allah, you'll miss that point. And you may end up like the situational ethics people or the humanist. God created you, he put you here, and then he left you to your own devices and He's out of your business now, and you never have to be accountable to anyone else. The third thing that happens to us if we forget or ignore that Allah is the one that is in charge of everything, if we underestimate him, is that we underestimate ourselves. If you underestimate God, you will ultimately underestimate yourself. You will underestimate your ability to be what Allah created you to be. You will underestimate your ability to be a model community. In Surah 3 of the Quran, in Ayat 110, he says, Kum tum kairu umma to nas. You are the best community evolved for mankind. But if you underestimate yourself, because you have underestimated God, you will never live up to that potential. You will never have model families, model communities. You will harm yourself. We know that if you do something wrong to someone that you should repent. You should ask them to forgive you. You should ask God to forgive you. And we leave it at that frequently. I have come across people in my line of work that are still punishing themselves. They ask God to forgive them. They ask the person to forgive them. But they never forgave themselves. And if you don't forgive yourself, you don't feel worthy of the blessing of God. You don't feel you deserve to be successful. You don't feel you deserve to progress because in the back of your mind, you still should be punished for what you did because you haven't forgiven yourself. Allah says that he forgives, and if we came to him with <coughs> sins as high as a mountain, asking sincerely for forgiveness, not associating anything with him, that he would forgive us. But if we underestimate the power of Allah, we will not access that forgiveness, or we will ignore the consequences of acting out, or we will never reach the potential for ourselves as individuals, as communities, as nations. 
I want to conclude with the fact that today is the first day of Black History Month. I watch signs. Allah says everything is signs. All around us is signs. And he talks about people that ignore those signs. And it's Black History Month today, and it's a Friday. It's Juma. And all of us had to come together. And I'm saying, wow, we came full circle. Yesterday, I was fortunate enough to attend a program that Impact had. And it was focusing on the contributions of African American Muslims to this American landscape. <coughs> and it was the first time that I had seen something of this magnitude done for those people who had been here for 40, 50, 60 years before there was a, a surge of, of Muslims coming from other countries. But the thing that it reminds me of, and don't let the movie Lincoln fool you, the thing that it reminds me of is that African Americans were written off as a people. It took three of us at one point to be a whole person. You had to get three black people together. They said it, we was one third human. And then there were people in high positions in the society that were bent on making sure that this group of people never had any resources available to them to better themselves. But no just estimate did they make of Allah. In 1913, a man by the name of Timothy Drew, later called Noble Drew Ali, started teaching Islam. In 1930, Master Farad Muhammad came and started teaching Islam. In 1933, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad began to teach Islam in this country. In 1952, we had Malcolm stand up and sh start shouting from the mountaintops. In 1981, we had Minister Louis Farrakhan reignite the nation of Islam. And throughout the 70s, we had Imam Murad Muhammad. <coughs> Never underestimate the power of Allah. No just estimate was made of the ability to reawake, revive, and bring back this group of people. So we thank Allah, and I invite you, and I invite myself, to never <laughs> underestimate the power of Allah to guide us, to protect us, to help us. Brothers, don't underestimate the power of Allah to help you achieve what you are striving for in your life. Allah says he sent inspiration to a bee. He can inspire you. He says that he provides for everything in the creation. He can provide for you. We say he hears everything. Talk to him. Sisters, he can provide for you. The guidance, the information, the, the tranquility of heart and mind to deal with situations in your home. Never underestimate the power of Allah to help you. Before you get on the phone and ask a brother or a sister, before you go to the masjid and even ask the imam, the first contact point should be make wudu, put your rug down, and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and let him solve the problem using the revelation he has given to his chosen servants. And if you do, then you will not suffer the consequences of those who underestimate the power of Allah. O oh Allah, we seek your guidance and your mercy in all things. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and shortcomings. We ask your choices, blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask you to endear to our heart the Quran Kareem. O oh Allah, we ask you that you will strengthen our resolve to be better Muslims and better human beings, to forgive us, to bless us, to forgive ourselves and each other. Amin. Be calm.
city. That's from Britain. Britain, Putra Jaya. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. administrative city. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I went there and went to the computer. Yeah. Went to the computer. Oh, yeah. I went there went for to a week. Yeah. Yeah. If you go on my website, if you go to, uh, just type in my demo, you'll, you'll see my speaking tour of Malaysia and all of them. They, they took over 100 and some pictures of, it, of Malay, all over Malaysia, you know. Yeah, I went to a village and some sisters uh, did a little village dance. And, <laughs> yeah, I was wonderful. I do find Malaysia. I love it. I love it. Only one concern I had, and I, and I told, I met with the president when I was there, the vice president and the president. So we went to his office and talked. So he asked me, do you have any concerns? So I said, I'll wait till after I leave and I'll email you. <laughs> because, because I had a film crew with me, and they couldn't go into the master because they weren't Muslim. So I said, how are they ever going to become Muslim? And what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, do not be those that prevent people from entering the house of Allah. So he says, you don't understand, brother. I said, like I told you, when I leave, I'll email you. Assalamu <laughs> 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 <Salam> alaikum. Maybe you have a good that's by God. I hope that Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shohidu Tarobdar. I come from Bangladesh. Is uh, today is Jumma Khutba. Is very good, and I like this kind Khutba, and I'm happy for the Khutba. Thank you. <laughs> 